What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize right off the bat. I am feeling under the weather, uh, really low on energy, but we're going to do this week in Warframe where we go over the entire weekly reset and things you can look forward to this week in Warframe. Reminder, there is a big dev stream on Wednesday, the 10th anniversary dev stream. Uh, I'm guessing there's going to go over like nostalgic stuff about that's happened in the past, but there will probably be some new information on upcoming things as well. All right, so we got a kick on Riven mod at Tashin right off the bat. Now, if you've been paying attention to the channel and all my weekly reset videos, you might have been able to get some extra reset purchases from Tashin uh, and from, from other places if you sign in right away. I'm letting you know that DE put in the patch notes, they have prevented that, so you will not be able to buy two Kit Gun Ribbon mods or two whatever. Two unreformable will probably never actually happen ever again. Uh, just putting it out there. But yeah, there's going to be a, uh, a big dev stream on Wednesday. Ho hopefully a big dev stream on Wednesday. Uh, they're going to likely tell us what's going on with the, um, the 10th anniversary and all that. And then additionally, uh, there should be Borrow this Friday as well. Now, of course, Borrow is not exciting anymore at all. Um, but apparently it's for new players, not for me. Um, so don't expect anything good from Borrow. They, I think DE is incapable of making new Prime mods now that we got Archon Shards. They're like, all right, Archon Shards will we'll, uh, we'll take the place of Prime mods. But yeah, let's go take a look at Call and see what we got going on here. All right, so for the Archon Hunt, we've got the, uh, the Owl Archon, so blue Archon Shards. would give you increased armor, energy, things like that. And for uh, mission types, we've got Spy on Earth. We've got Excavation on Earth. We've got the boss fight also on Earth. So good luck with that. If I were you, and I was someone that was... I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Blue shards are not as good as Amber and Crimson shards most of the time. I would say if you're doing your call mission this week, don't even bother buying this shard. Save your shard, uh, save your stock up. Now, there likely will never be a double shard purchase ever again um, from this guy because they fixed that bug. But honestly, I've got way too many blue shards, and they're just not worth the stock to me anymore. If I'm going to be doing the uh, the call mission, it better be something that I actually want. So I'm going to skip on Chipper this week. All right, for the actual call mission, I am on Sneaky Sabotage. If someone has never missed a single week of this, I'm on Sneaky Sabotage. Um... Wait, what is this? Kill two Moas with a crate in the Veil Factory. That's a challenge I've never seen before. Okay, what we got here? So, for Sneaky Sabotage, we got complete the mission without dying or becoming veiled. So, just don't die, basically. Blue girl, find armor worms. Break five Call veils them. using the Veil Breaker. So, remember, it will be the, uh, the uh, Fortuna guys. There will be no actual Marines like the picture shows right here. There are no Grenier Marines in Sneaky Sabotage. So, go look for the Fortuna guys. This one does have cumulative progress. So, there you go. Uh, crate smash. Kill Moas with a crate in the Veil Factory. I actually have never done that, so I will have to figure out how to do that. Um, thankfully, it's a blue shard week, so I don't really need to do every challenge, technically, um, since I will be skipping purchasing that shard from Chipper. Find four confiscated K-Drive parts, so find the, the blue glowing K-Drive parts in the mission. Uh, just a little collectibles thing. Check every little corner. Have fun with that. Find and collect Chipper's tools. Okay, so it's going to be some random collectible hidden in the map. And then kill 20 Narmer Moas. Wow, Moas only? Call ready to deploy. These seem like some new challenges they actually recently made. I've never seen them before. Uh, and they Call seem relatively ready. annoying. So there you go. All right, moving on to the Night Wave. Now, I'm actually expecting Night Wave uh, ch uh, end to get announced this week, guys. So I'd say, uh, like, you got like a month. A, a month at most is my guess on finishing this Night Wave, although it has not been formally announced. So keep that in mind. All right, so for the normal weeklies, we got complete three Kuva Siphon missions. Now, big thing about this is when you click on that Kuva Siphon mission uh, on the, the star chart, you don't need to actually kill the Kuva uh, Siphon itself to complete the mission and get this com this going. So go to the star chart, find a capture mission. You can just speed run and not even get the Kuva. It will count for this. It'll also give you a 50% chance for a Requiem Relic as well. So really easy one right there. I believe you need to beat the War Within to get access to these quests, though. So if you're a new player, you might not have it. Destroy a cruise ship with a forward artillery. That's going to be in Railjack. Uh, the big blaster cannon thing on the front. Use that to blow up a cruise ship once the uh, once the shield reactors are down on the veil and all that. Uh, complete five Cephalon, five scans for Cephalon Samaris. So you can do like a weekly bounty. I'm probably not going to even bother with this one. But if you want to do it, you can get... Uh, like there's special bounties you can grab from Samaris for like dailies and, and all that kind of stuff. So have fun with that. Kill a Tusk Thumper in the Plains of Eidolon. 
Uh, usually I just activate a bounty and then fly around in the planes. Uh, go uh, go up high in the air with your arc wing, then fly down, then go up, and then you'll hear the thumping, like really loud thumping noise. That's where the thumper is. You can shoot with, like the catchment or something. Complete four different uh, Zeramon bounties. So if you have not beaten the new war, you want to have access to this. Spoiler from DE, there's a new planet after you beat the new war uh, with special bounties. And yeah, that's going to be quite a late game thing for a lot of people. So don't worry if you don't have like Kuva Siphons unlocked or the Zeramon. You'll eventually get there. It's just going to be you being story quests. Also, we get complete three sorties. I don't think the Archon sortie counts for this one. Uh, so that would be three days to complete this sortie expert uh, bounty. So be my guest if you want to go for that. Uh, like I said, it'll, I'm guessing that the Night Wave will end within the next month. So, yeah. Free one captured Solaris using a Granum Crown. These guys are hidden inside uh, Corpus missions the, on the ship. Uh, the flying ship. Uh, rather than the flying ship. The, the non-planetary like missions for the Corpus. The, the ones where the Corpus ship's flying in the air and you can like just go to it instead. Free those guys with the crown that drops from the treasurer. And there you go. For Night Wave store this week, we got Evergreen stuff. And helmets. Helmets, helmets, helmets. Wolf Hood Blueprint. Okay. Gyre Automaton Helmet for that new Gyre Augment. And for uh, Aura Mods, you got Rifle Amp, Sniper, Sniper Scavenger, Shotgun Scavenger, and Holster Amp. As far as, like, good ones to get out of these, they're really not that great of options. I'd say probably go for Holster Amp if I had to choose one of these. Uh, they are really... These are not meta ones at all. Uh, shotgun Scavenger and Sniper Scavenger. Like, Rifle Scavenger you could maybe make an argument for, for like Ogress, but yeah. No. Uh, and then moving on here, we got Mastery Fodder Weapons. We got the Heat Sword, Dark Sword, and Plasma Sword Blueprint. For PvP Ogmons, we got Power 3 for Ivara, giving you three arrows from one cast of her quiver. Brainstorm for the Garkata, giving you infinite ammo and headshots. And Focus Acceleration for the Tetra, giving you increased projectile speed while aiming. So that is it for the Night Wave and the Archon Hunt. So basically it's double blue week, the week that a lot of people tend to skip. But if you want to get your, you know, your blue Tau shards, I'd say don't skip the Archon Hunt itself. So you can get your pity system built up. Let's go take a look at these invigorations. Uh, and just a reminder, if you want to get access to these invigorations, they are RNG per week. And you have to basically get rank 5 with the Necrolisk on Dimos, or you can buy this from the, the market technically. So we've got five jump resets. And 200% secondary increased crit chance for Grendel. Five jump reset sounds kind of funny if it could work in his meatball, which I think it should. So we can have like a bouncing around uh, meatball of doom. We've got Volt, increased secondary damage and increased ability efficiency. Sounds relatively nice. And we've got Neja, melee crit chance and 75% reload speed. Those are not very synergistic, but those are decent stats anyway. So maybe I'll try one of these out. Probably the Grendel five jumps one sounds kind of funny. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the uh, weekly reset, guys. Big things coming up this week. Dev stream on Wednesday, and I guess borrow on Friday, if you consider that big stuff. So yeah, we're expecting Daviri in April. Not sure when in April. They're, they have not talked about cross-save at all. So definitely be uh, spamming cross-save in DE's Twitch chat on Wednesday uh, when they are talking about that. Also, I'll be live streaming the, the dev stream as well. So come on, check my stream as well. All right, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Peace!